it's Liz Yule from Old Stables Crafts. Thank you for joining me again today. Um, I have just received my new trimmer, which uh, you may know is currently only available to demonstrators or to those who wish to become a demonstrator. So you can add it to your starter kit. Um, it's £23, so it's actually less than the original trimmer. Uh, and I thought I would do a quick review. So first thing to note is that it is significantly thinner, as in less deep than the original one, but I say the original one, the previous one, but it doesn't have storage on the back. Now, I did keep all my old blades. That was more from a laziness point of view than anything else. Um, but there is nowhere to store blades. I'm going to be able to get over that. It's not a big issue. Uh, the other thing to note is that, or one of the other things to note, is this old one had a switch at the top so you could lock everything in place, um, which meant if you turned it over, this would fl flop around unless you clicked it closed. This one doesn't have that, but equally it doesn't flip over, and that's because it's got some little nodules, nods, nodules at the end um, and a little bit where you just click it into place. So when you've got it down, it's very easy to keep it you know, in place and it doesn't wibble around in the breeze. So that's good. Now it has got a film on um, and I thought I would show you how to take the film off as part of this. I haven't yet taken it off. So what else is different? Now, obviously, I'm talking about the old uh, trimmer that we could get in Europe. I think in North America you only had inches, whereas we had centimetres and inches, but our grid was in centimetres. The one that is now out is in inches and centimetres. The grid is in inch increments from horizontally and quarter inch increments um, vertically. Now that's I think for a lot of uh, people using International A4 that may be an issue. For me it's not because I although I use International A4 and I am conversant with both metric and imperial I tend to craft with imperial in mind so for me this is fine but equally um, just having the lines means that I can see if something is slightly skew width. So that's really all I use those lines for anyway. So it's not a big deal. We have two blades still. So we've got the light grey for scoring and the dark grey for cutting. That is the same. They run really smoothly. I mean, you know, I'm flicking them and they're moving pretty much of their own volition. So that's great. Um, so I think really now actually there's no, I think really I'll put this one away for the moment. The only other thing to say is this goes up to 14 and a half and this one goes oh so much further. Um, right, so let's have a look at this properly. I've seen a number of reviews on the new trimmer already um, and there were a couple of comments that I thought was a, were a little odd having seen it. I didn't think they were odd at the time but I think they're odd now. So someone did say, actually I do need to at least bring a blade back. Let me let me grab a blade from underneath. So on the old blade, if you wanted to gut your card, you had a point where you could see where you were lining up your blade. And someone did say that that's not on the new blade. Well, it is. Um, it's let me see if I can get this so it's in the camera and in the light. It's probably easiest to show you on the pale one. So there are these lines either side and on either part of this handle and that is where the blade is. So as I say I'm a bit confused by that comment because if I wanted to gut a piece of card I would know, obviously I wouldn't use that because that's the scorer, I would know that that is where my blade is. So, and obviously that's where my blade is, so I'm not sure about that. Another comment that I've seen is that this has got an arrow and this has got a blob and people don't know why. My logic brain says that's because that's a cutting blade and this is a scoring blade. So it's indicating the shape of what's underneath. So this is a blade, 
not an arrow, and this is a blob to show that it's a scorer rather than anything else. So that's those two points. So as I say, this shows me that that's where I was cutting, and this shows me that this is where I'm cutting. Um, right, so this pulls out. It's quite... stiff's the wrong word. It's... you need to be very definite, um, and it then flips out to, I kid you not, 17 and a quarter inches. Now, I do want to just turn it over so you can see. There is... there's a little piece here that clicks into that piece there. So there is, I don't know how well I'm going to be able to show you this, um, there's this little lump here and a little sort of recess here and as you push it in it clicks into place so it is held. Uh, the, the screw mechanism is hidden whereas on the old one it wasn't so it's inside the, the mechanism whereas on this one it was here. Um, it's an observation, it's not a comment on whether it's good or bad. Uh, there are rubber non-slip non feet on all of the places you would expect, um, including on the end of your extension arm. And here's the thing, so it goes up to six and one-eighth of an inch, and then it starts again at six and a half inches, but here there are one, two little grooves so these are your next this is your next one eighth of an inch so you're actually only missing a very very small amount here um, of measuring facility so much better than the old one which you had to start working in this dip um, so you had this gap then you had this kind of weird bit um, and six and a half was it wasn't necessarily that easy to line up and six and five eighths would have been a nightmare because it wasn't there. Uh, it may not be important but that's just an observation. Uh, if you like hanging things from pegboards and there are lots of pegboards around you can with this where you, you couldn't with the other. Um, so let me start cutting and then I will take off the film. I have got a selection of papers and foils and card um, to have a go at. I thought I would start with our old friend Basic Black, which on the previous trimmer, even with a new blade, could be a challenge. Now I have got to get used to the fact that rather than just lifting up because it's not locked, I've got to lift it at the top or the bottom. There are little lips to help you with that, so um, that's just good to know. So I'm going to lift it up. Now this is where I kind of do weird things because uh, actually no, I don't on this. So 14 and and 14.8 centimeters is normally where I score for a card that I'm then going to tent fold. Uh, so let's do a couple of scores and see what that looks like. Yeah, it's a finer score than previously, but that's fine. And then a half sheet this way would be ten and a half centimetres. So click it down and cut. And let me open that up and I will show you just ooh, how clean that cut is. So no fuzzy edges. Can you see that? It's lovely. And almost like, you know, it's like butter through a knife or indeed a knife th through butter. Oh, and there's the other thing. There is no removable mat, so you're not going to lose this mat. Hurrah, hurrah. Um, how many times with the old trimmer have you taken it out of your bag and turned it upside down and lost your mat? So this will no longer fall out because it's part of the trimmer. Hurrah and la la. So that is my basic black. Now I'm just going to fold it in half and see how that folds and the answer is really nice. I mean obviously I've got to burnish it but that's a really crisp fold. Very happy with that. So pop those in with my card bases. So that's basic black. Oh and I should say let's when I got it um, and this will mean I can show you how to take the um, blade out. When I got it it was actually um, 
the blade was on top of the um, scoring blade, so the cutter was on top of the scorer. Because I've got used to them being the other way round, I just took one out and changed it round. So my scoring blade is at the top and you can hide them both sides. So that's perfect as well. So that's as per the original. So that's good. Now, let me just show you again how to take the blade out. There is a very small little dent. Uh, not quite sure how easily I'm going to be able to show you. Um, let me grab my take your pick tool. So if I run this along, it goes in and out just there. There is a, a dent and there. And you just take your blade and you get one end and then the other end comes out. So there are these two little feet that click into there and the blade is jolly, jolly big and looks jolly sharp. Don't think I'd want to go too near that. Um, and then obviously you can just reverse to put it back in. Now if you're someone who only ever cuts in one direction I would recommend t turning it over every now and again so that you use the other blade because if you only ever cut in one direction you're going to blunt one side but not the other. These blades are reversible so you can take at the moment we've got the arrow cutting blade pointing down through 180 degrees and now it's pointing up. So well worth remembering that if you are one of those people that generally cuts in one direction, that is an option. OK, so coloured cardstock. Now it is locked and I can just about very carefully feed my cardstock underneath the blade, underneath this. But I would probably want to lift it up. So let's start by scoring. So let's get rid of the cutting blade. And score and take that out and again nice narrow score line and again I'm going to cut it at my standard card blank card blank oh and guess what it started raining again and then push so there we go nice clean cut again no issue with that at all let me just fold that and no cracking no buckling very good. Happy girl so far. Right, so I need to work out which one's which. This is a thick, whisk, uh, thick very vanilla. This is standard thickness very vanilla. So let's do some more card blanks. So I'm going to line my card up at 14.8. Get rid of my cutting blade. Score. Lift. Nice score again. Ten and a half centimetres, so half a sheet, and push, and again, like a knife through butter, lovely. And if I fold that, again, no, no buckling, no wrinkling, really nice cut. So that's that. Now let's try ordinary very vanilla. Now I know my basic measurement, so I'm going to cut at three and seven eighths of an inch. See, I told you I work in metric and imperial. So three and seven, seven eighths of an inch. And trim down to three and seven eighths of an inch because there will be a bit left. Now, here's another thing. This is all butt board. So the old one where there was the gap for the for the um, arm to go there was a, a gap here as well so if you were doing something really narrow it could be quite difficult to push it up against anything so for me this is better so three and seven eighths lovely in both directions so that's I will keep for sentiments those sorts of things so now I've got my two pieces of very vanilla and I'm going to see if I can cut both of them at the same time. And this I cut at five and five eighths of an inch. Lovely. Really happy with that. So that's, let's do that again. Make sure it wasn't a fluke. So get those lined up. And 
five and five eighths is there. Lift. I am going to have to train myself to lift there, but again, nice clean cut, no problem at all. Very happy. And there's less of a dent. Do you remember you used to get a dent when you cut? Not anymore. So pop those in with my card blanks. OK, so I've got a piece of the retired uh, lovely lipstick foil. This was in Celebration. So this is where I say you've got these butt boards here. It's a narrow strip um, and I can push it and it will stay straight. So I thought I would see what it's like at cutting really narrow strips. So we've got these lines. I'm going to go at, oh, I'm going to try a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to line it up top and bottom. And obviously this is, you know, foil is foil is foil. I'm not sure that this is a straight edge in the first place. So I, th no, it's not. Uh, let me find a ruler. So that's one and a half. And that is not quite one and a half. So probably not straight in the first place. Always a good start. Um, so I think I'll just straighten it up. Oop, or not. So I'm going to line it up against one of these vertical lines. Close my lid and cut. And no, it's not. It wasn't straight. You can see it wasn't. It was out a little bit, but that's... I'm one of those people that will measure. I'll get a, um, a, one of these. Um, just to make sure that my pictures are straight. I am that sad. So let's try a quarter of an inch. So that would be there. So it's actually on one of these lines because the lines are every quarter of an inch. So line up, let go, and... There we go. Lovely narrow cut. Now I'm going to turn it over because that will be a way of showing you just how clean the cut is. Because if anything's going to show it, it's going to show it on foil. And by clean, I mean whether it dents in or not. So this is the cut edge. And I don't know if you can see, there is the very tiniest little lip here. If I, ooh, I wouldn't be able to cut anything that small on my previous trimmer. I could probably cut it the other way. So let me get my old trimmer and cut it this way. And can you see there's quite a dent there, um, whereas here there isn't. So like that a lot. Gosh, what else can I do? Okay. So I have got some of the old uh, glimmer paper. So this is the old style rather than the new style. So this is thick. Um, so I thought I would see whether this cuts. Easy. What's the cut like? Really nice, really smooth. So if anything's going to be difficult to cut, black and this. Designer series paper, let's do some red. Nah, now, here's the thing. So, because this has got a butt board all the way along, um, and because it's proud, whereas this one was part of the. This was smooth here, so if you lay, had anything that was over here, it would lie flat. So, for, with this, if you put pressure here, you are going to end up with a, a dent. Um, so that's so far the only negative I can find. Obviously resolved really easily by making sure you pull your arm out if you've got a piece of paper that is larger than six inches. And this edge, edge here, whoop, here, here, this one here, is flat with the table. So that's good. Right, okay, so... Let's do very narrow strips of... Ooh, and I've just noticed something. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Let me get this out. Come on, out you come. If I could get my scoring blade out, which at the moment I haven't... Oh, yes, there we are. 
it's it's I think it rolls. I don't know, but it's not just a little blob, it's actually round. I don't know whether it rolls, but it's it's not just a pimple. It's actually a dull blade, which is probably why it's getting smoother um, cuts, uh, scores. Anyway, really narrow bits of designer series paper. Lovely, and again, no horrible denting. Really nice. So that's good. Uh, vellum. Vellum, that's what I need. Oh, and watercolour paper. Knew there were some things that I hadn't got out. Uh, let's find some watercolour paper and some vellum. So, piece of vellum. Now I'm going to try scoring first, and it's all got a wibble. Actually, why well, won't? I'll straighten the edge off by cutting. And that is lovely. And then I will score. And yep, that's fine. I think if you scored too hard, let's see if I put a bit of welly. Yeah. So if you're if you score too hard, you are going to cut. Whereas if you don't push, just let the blade do the work. Really nice score. But do not press hard. You want to just run it kind of one finger, then you get a nice score as opposed to, um, oh, I'm not going to, I'm going to have to get used to where I'm lifting this up. If I push too hard, I just get a raggedy cut. So that's worth bearing in mind. Let's, this is the current um, watercolour paper, so which had a really fuzzy edge. Good grief. Let me find something to show you just how bad that is. Look at that fuzzy edge. So this is cotton watercolour paper. So I'm going to give it a real test. I'm going to... Let me fold the arm in for a moment. I am going to try and trim so that I don't have that fuzzy edge, but without losing too much of the paper. Oh, that's so much better. Look! Look at that! As opposed to, this is what I cut off, fuzzy fuzzy, this is what I've just cut. Nice and clean! Oh, I'm so happy. Now, obviously, one of the things we don't know is how long the blades will last. Um, that is something that, we'll, that only time will tell. I have got new blades, just in case, because I am allowed, to, as, as a, an existing demonstrator, I was allowed to order four blades. Um, which is the number that come in a pack. So I have ordered those so that I've got replacements. Um, but it, as I say, time is going to be the teller. Can you take this off? Uh, for cleaning, yes, you just pull it. I wouldn't do it too often. Um, but if you need to clean it because you've got glue or something on, then yes, you can. Oh, that'll be a helicopter flying over. Uh, you can just clip it on and clip it off. Just be gentle with it. So, how do we get the film off? Because the film is actually already beginning to irritate me. So, I saw a tip on one of our demonstrator websites about getting the film off as the mercury acetate. And the, quest the idea was that you took a piece of um, sticky tape. So, let's see if that works on this. Not so as you'd notice, but I thought it might be worth a try. No, that's... Oh, it's lifting it off as opposed to bringing it up. So maybe if I do it enough times... No, then I can just push it down again. So that's not the way to do it. Um, OK, this might be very gently taking one's... Take your pick tool, yeah, and just lift it. It is a very, very fine film. Um, I think this might be one of those things that when you get yours you want to get it done and just forget that you ever had to do it because it's, it is quite, 
I'm not convinced I'm going to be able to get all of the bits off. Uh, oh, maybe. I think once you've got an end, yeah, once you've got an end, it comes up nicely and it's beautifully smooth. It won't be beautifully smooth for very long, I can guarantee. So, again, I want to just see if I can, maybe if I get that piece of tape again, uh, I can get just an edge coming up. almost like trying to get an air bubble going. But I want I want to make the mistakes so that when you can get yours you don't have to. So there we go, that's another one and then we just got this one to do here. So again, let's just get an end going, and this really is train crash TV, isn't it? Okay, there we are. Beautiful, my lovely new trimmer. So the only negative I've got, and it's a tiny weeny teeny weeny little negative, is this butt board. Uh, because if I've got something that is larger than six inches, I don't really want to have to put the arm out. Um, but it's it's just a question of getting used to it. That's it. Other than that, I'm really liking it. I like that I'm not going to lose my mat if I turn it upside down. I like that this clicks into place automatically. I am going to have to get used to the fact that it's not going to come up easily I mean by which I don't mean it's hard but with the switch at the top it was just really easy to pull up whereas there is a little bit of resistance with this one but other than that it's light it's sturdy it's significantly lighter than the old one um, so yes like it so for me that's a thumbs up um, as I say, if you would like one of these, the only way of getting one at the moment is to join my team um, or join as a demonstrator. And you can join my team if you're in the UK, France, Germany, Austria or the Netherlands. Uh, £130 of products for £99, no shipping costs at all. And you will also get a starter pack so that if you want to run it as a business, which you absolutely do not need to do if you do not wish to, then, um, but you are good to go if you do, because you've got a pack of um, catalogues and order forms and those sorts of things. So, and it's valued at about £45, the business pack. So when I say it's £130 worth of stuff for 99 not really. Really, it's nearer £175 of stuff for £99. So anyway, thank you very much indeed for putting up with me. This is 28 minutes long of a review, but I love it. Thank you very much indeed. If you've enjoyed it, as I say, give it a thumbs up. If you would like to subscribe, there's a subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner. If you've got any questions about this, please leave them in the comments below and I will get back to you. Thank you very much indeed. And I look forward to seeing you again very soon.